What's up YouTube? I'm Daniel, this is Air Down, and today I'm going to tell you how I'm making a monster. By the way, I've been thinking about a gang sign for my channel. What do you think of this? Air down! I don't know. <laughs> Anywho, today is a lot more than glorified show and tell. I'm gonna actually describe to you pound for pound how I'm gonna build the dreadnought. I haven't really explained it well, so I'm gonna take this time in this video to tell you exactly what I'm doing. My hope is that by the end of this video, you know exactly what's going on and you're tracking with me 100% on the Dreadnought. As always, first things first. Revision IPA, my number one favorite beer of all time, no matter what. Let's start by asking the question, what is the Dreadnought? Now the Dreadnought is a 2002 Dodge Durango with a 5.9 liter V8 Magnum. The Dodge Durango is going to get this front axle, this rear axle, these giant tires and the components you see here. That is what the Dreadnought is. A super nasty, crazy rock crawler for my family. Now I want to explain where the name Dreadnought came from. I bought the Durango and I was thinking about names. I think, I think a project needs a name just for that extra little bit of uh, personal touch that, that that gives a build. And it kind of makes it relatable to people maybe a little better. And while I was searching, I kind of came across like battleships and reading through battleships and like the names of battleships. And I seen one and it was the Dreadnought. And, and it kind of, struck me the juxtaposition of like a normal battleship name and uh, like a normal battleship is called like the destroyer or something similar that's meant to strike fear into the hearts of enemies but the dreadnought was different to me instead of saying hey you out there i'm gonna kill you what the dreadnought is saying is hey you guys inside me hmm Hey, you guys inside this ship, the Dreadnought, don't worry, I've got you, you're taken care of. And I liked that idea. Plus, I don't know if I'm the only guy out there that has this feeling, but when I take my little Jeep out, I'm always afraid of breaking something. And I don't want to be afraid of breaking something when I take my family out and when we go wheeling in that. So. The Dreadnought has two kind of names for me. One, I want to build it, and the idea is that I build it so strong that I never have to worry about it breaking or stranding us. It'll break. I mean, I don't want to have that idea of like, it'll never break. I just don't want to be stranded because I underbuilt the car, really, is what it boils down to. So there you go. There's a summary of where the name Dreadnought came from and why I, why I think it's cool. Okay, the next question I want to ask is why? Why Durango? Why the Dreadnought? Why? I have a CJ, right? It can seat up to four people. We had a third kid and now all of a sudden I can't put my whole family in the CJ. And actually, if you've ever packed for kids on any kind of trip, you know it takes a, a Suburban really to go anywhere. So um, the idea was to get a vehicle that I could turn into a rock crawler that sat lots of people and had lots of storage space, but still kind of a small form factor. And so naturally I started gravitating towards SUVs and like, you know, JK, 
You can put a third row seat in or you can put three across in the back. JL, but that's kind of out of my price range. Really a JK is out of my price range too. You know, I looked at Toyotas, I looked at some other stuff. I even looked at it as Zuzu Rodeo for a little bit. And uh, they're just a little on the small side, really. So it came down to where I needed something like truly mid-size to get where I really wanted to go. Actually, my mom had a Durango, pretty much the same Durango, just gray, when I was growing up. So it kind of immediately was in my mind as a possibility. So reasons to pick a Durango. It has a factory V8, a factory 360 cubic inch V8. It has a decent tranny right from the start, a 46RE, which they put in some of the bigger trucks. It has a really thick, nasty boxed in frame. It has heater, AC, seat seven, premium sound, leather seats, plenty of storage, a roof rack. I mean, I can go on and on and on. It's narrow, it's as long as I need, and it's short, so it's compact for what it is. And, and the more I look at it, the more I think the Durango is even a maybe more perfect platform to build a crawler than some of the big crawlers people make out of like JKs and Toyotas and stuff like that. And maybe at the end of this whole escapade you'll agree with me, but I think that Durango is a completely overlooked amazing rock crawling platform. So to summarize the why. I needed more seats, more storage space in a vehicle that was going to be strong, capable with the stock motor and tranny, and, and completely usable in a small package. And that's where the Durango comes from. Alright, let's at least go have a look at the Durango. This is a 2002 Dodge Durango, 120,000 miles, so it's basically mint. Let's have a walk this way. Now, my preferred color was like a dark gray or even that bluish color, but you just couldn't find it, and if you did, it was peeling. So I got the white. I don't know how I feel about the silver, but I'm going to cut a lot of that out anyway. But uh, let's talk about some specifics here. This thing's gonna have to stretch. I, I think everyone knows that. This front is gonna have to come forward about seven inches. What, I don't have a lot of body here to cut into. You see the doors right here. There's a couple things I can kind of smash back or cut into, but the tire is gonna start here. Basically at full stuff will be right up in this business. So the remainder of the growth is gonna have to come that way. So there's cross members, bumpers, sheet metal, I've seen guys that have done this with the Durango, they have to cut the light. So, I mean, the light is so not important compared to the 43s. So if it must go, it must go. Now in the back, I don't actually have to stretch it that far. It can really go like four inches is all. I mean, you see, I've got a full hand width in there now. I can make up some distance there, do a little cutting out of this plastic, and then the rest goes back just a little bit. Now, I've already bought some lower links, you saw those. Those are going to be 38 inches eye to eye. 38 is a good medium for something that's going to be built as big as this. Let's just walk this way so we see the full loop. Yeah, she's a beauty, huh? The one thing that I really want to like, I want people to notice about this thing. I'm like, I'm on a curb so it's cheating. But it's short, right? It seats seven, but it's short. So the center of gravity is naturally low. It's not that wide. I mean, let's have a look at it from the back real quick. For, SUV, for an SUV, it's just not that wide. I mean, it's narrow, it's short, it's a little bit long, but it's really no longer than a stretched out JK. So I think we've got that coupled with the stock 5.9. We've got something that's gonna be a really good starting point. All right, back in the garage. I want to thank my little brother, Jeremy. He's the one behind the camera right now. I appreciate him taking the time out of his day to do it. Thanks, little brother. Let's go back in. Okay, now probably the question you guys care about the most is when. Now, you see here, I've, 
And if you follow me at all on Instagram or you've subscribed to me on YouTube, you've seen me building and building. Now what, what my goal was is to completely build a rear axle, build a front axle enough to drive on, collect all my expensive components, and then make my stab at stuffing it into the Durango. That way all this stuff is taken care of and then I minimize my downtime with the Durango. Simply because I'll be using my CJ as a daily driver and it is, you know, a 77, so it's pretty old. It's tough to say, but I think that I'll be elbows deep in actually putting these things underneath it in like the late November to February, March timeframe, somewhere in that window. And uh, that is sort of a stab in the dark. You'll have to excuse me for that, but with three kids and the business CNA that I keep talking about that I'm trying to run, plus trying to film and edit and put all this on YouTube. I mean, plus the shop we just started, the CNA Motorsports shop, and I work a 40, so I mean, I, I don't wanna be whining and complaining, but I'm, I'm a little strapped for time is the real issue I'm getting at here. Now, one goal that I haven't mentioned up until this point to really anybody is I'm going to design and fabricate my own upper link mounts that go into the frame and the belly pans and the bumpers and all that. And I'm capable of doing the sheet metal programs and all that to build all of these things to a production level myself. Um, it's going to be three link front and rear and I know that sounds a little crazy in the rear but I want to save the gas tank where it is, but it's getting a nice high track bar to keep my roll center where it's supposed to be. And I think that this suspension will function just as well as a four link in this case. Other plans are full belly pans, front and rear bumper custom, and then an exo cage eventually. Kind of a rock roller style bucket, racing seats with harnesses for the front. Regular seat belts in the back because the kids will be in like booster seats or car seats so they don't really need anything fancy yet. And then maybe some clever storage things that I build into the back of it. Now a really important thing to mention is when this is actually driving and rolling, it won't be done. I'm not going to go from zero to complete in one shot. I wish I could, I just don't have the time or the money for that. So what's going to happen is the back's completely usable, but right now has stock axle shafts. The back end's already built. Now what the back end has is a Yukon zip locker, 538 gears, a nice ballistic shave kit, and a ballistic truss with the integrated diff cover. The front will be gutted. It actually has nothing in it right now. I don't know if you can see in the inner seas, but Bluetooth axles right now. The front will literally just be set up to be a roller. The, the goal is phase one, working rear end, Bluetooth front end, just for driving and two wheel drive. Once I can afford to put the goodies in that front end, it'll get the full suite of goodies, just the best stuff right off the top so I never have to worry about buying multiple stuff. And then I'll have four wheel drive. At that point, I'll be shoving some aftermarket axles in the rear end too, just to beef it up. Okay, so phase one and two, easy. Two wheel drive, basically, then basic four wheel drive. But then the last phase is Gucci Fab. If anybody else out there has used Gucci Fab, you own it, sorry. But anyway, Gucci Fab means that everything is done. Everything is in place. All the fine details and the fine touches are completely worked out. And a vinyl wrap. I'm honestly thinking about doing like something really cool, edgy sort of vinyl wrap on the Durango just to give it that last thing to really pop or explode. And uh, that's, that's the last phase, that's Gucci Fab. That's where I'm deep in debt. But, uh, so there's the real three phases that I'm gonna go through. 
And I don't know how long you'll see it in two-wheel drive and then four-wheel drive and then Gucci Fab, but that's basically the run that I'm going for here. So you can expect to see that kind of happening. So that's it folks. I mean a lot I've got a lot of questions and I hopefully this gives a lot of answers and hopefully this clearly defines my path forward on the Durango. I, I want to spark your guys's interest. I want to give you guys an alternative vehicle to build a rock crawler out of. And like I said earlier, if you can buy one of those for 3200 bucks and it's pretty good, it's so great to save the additional money that you'd spend on a JK or something four door that's also expensive. And, and be able to dump your money into this stuff, right? This is adult show and tell. And all of this plus that still doesn't come close to a JK. So if I can at least give you an alternative and get you guys excited about something other than a four door Jeep, don't get me wrong, I own a Jeep, I like Jeeps. It's just the expense of it, you know? And for a budget guy, you can get premium stuff and a decent rig with a V8, AC, all that stuff, and still get out in the hills. So that's the plan with the Dreadnought Durango. That's where I'm going forward. I hope that this is compelling. I hope that it's interest catching, and I hope that seeing this big equipment go onto a nasty rock crawler and then get the crap beat out of it as a family crawler is something that you're into. If it is, please subscribe. That way you know every time I make content, something pops up, you can just watch it right away. And if this provided any value for you at all, please smash the like button. And until next time, I'm Daniel. This is Aired Down. Peace out and go rock crawling. Aired Down. What? GoPro, stop recording.